Did you listen to the two minutes of the audio tape that was leaked by the Biden regime to CNN America? Did you listen to it? Oh, yeah. It's all over the media, you know. It's all over the media. And the legal analysts and the hosts and the rest, they want to know, how does Trump get out of this? How does Trump get out of this? Were the 17 audio tapes involving the Bidens and the bribery for $10 million from the communist Chinese? Who's president today? Joe Biden? He's the one that has power today. He's the one destroying the country. Does anybody care about those? Things? Where are they? How come CNN never gets a copy of that stuff? But notice the media could give a damn about civil liberties, due process, poison juries, misconduct by the Department of Justice, by the rogue federal prosecutor. Notice they don't give a damn. about individual rights and the Bill of Rights. Civil liberties apply to everybody. And so this morning I got up early and I posted the following, which has made the rounds. While beating their chests about the horrors of Trump holding classified information, The fact is that the corrupt Biden DOJ, sleazy Jack Smith's office, the usual corrupt media lapdogs have publicly identified, characterized, and even released whatever classified information is known to the public. Everything we've learned about this is from the leaks, America. Not from Trump. From the leaks. By the government. From the filings. By the government. So here we have another leak. In this, they've committed scores of felonies, interfered in a presidential election, and have pushed the nation to the brink of some kind of civil war while smearing and denouncing Trump and his supporters. Trump hasn't leaked anything to the public. They have. After 50 years in Washington, Biden owns the federal bureaucracy. The thoroughly corrupt Biden family and Biden regime use the power of federal law enforcement against their political opponents. The so-called MAGA extremists, pro-lifers, parents, all white supremacists, don't you know, whatever that means. While the same investigators and prosecutors pull all punches, lie, censor, cover up, dismiss, play down all the publicly known evidence Thank you, FBI and IRS whistleblowers, Kevin McCarthy, Jim Jordan, and James Comer. Of millions and millions of dollars in farm payoffs, bribes, influence peddling, money laundering, and other sleazy Biden financial schemes, especially involving selling out to our biggest threat, communist China. We have a Manjurian president. The whistleblowers have testified about obstruction political interference, multiple underlying crimes. They've been ignored by the corrupt media, personally attacked by the power-hungry Democrat Party, and punished by the Biden regime. Attorney General Garland, corrupt to the core like most mob lawyers, has been caught perjuring himself before Congress and obstructing justice by claiming to not have interfered in the Hunter Biden investigation. When IRS whistleblowers say the prosecutor told them, that's David Weiss, that he did. Even though Weiss is trying to reverse course. Problem is, they've numerous witnesses and contemporaneous notes to back them up. Garland has approved every sleazy investigative and prosecutorial tactic against Trump and MAGA Republicans while trying to create a public image of the earnest judge. He's a dangerous man with Stalinist characteristics. Garland has stonewalled appointing a special counsel to investigate his boss, Joe Biden, because he wants to smother with a political pillow Biden's multiple criminal activities that even involve our national security. 
He's the man in charge of the Biden cover-up and the Trump imprisonment effort. Garland appointed and unleashed the disgraced Jack Jack Smith, known for Gestapo-like tactics to pursue Biden's political targets, especially so-called MAGA Republicans, and his biggest threat and nemesis, Donald Trump. Smith was publicly admonished in an 8-0 Supreme Court decision. 8-0. For his abuse of power in a phony public corruption case brought against a former Republican governor, Garland saw that as a compelling credential. And of all the lawyers he could have chosen, he picked this one. Because he knew he will do the work of the mob. Garland, Biden, Biden, his operatives, the hopelessly corrupt media. The Democrat Party are destroying our country right before our eyes. This latest prosecutorial leak of an audio clip to CNN is further intended to poison a jury pool and deny the former president due process, as he was denied attorney-client privilege and the usual administrative processes afforded former presidents when leaving office. To be clear, we know nothing about the context of the audio. Nothing. We are fed exactly two minutes via CNN, a favorite state-run media outlet. We know no more or no less than they tell us to know. And the multiple felonies committed by this regime in leaking the tape will be completely ignored. Felonies committed in pursuit of Trump are no longer felonies. The justice system is dead. The Democrat Party owns the federal government. That's what I posted. (coughs) Have you heard a single broadcast network, any, Raise these concerns. Not one. A single host. Not one. A single legal analyst. Not one. The government commits felony after felony after felony. Leak after leak after leak after leak. About classified material. They violate the Espionage Act. But it doesn't matter. It's of no consequence. I see this piece about Netanyahu. It's funny, in a sick way, how the Marxist left is the same whether it's in America, Israel, or anywhere else. By the great Caroline Glick on GNS, excuse me, JNS, on Thursday night with sunken faces. Channel 13's legal correspondents delivered the news. The judges presiding over Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's trial for bribery and breach of trust had told the prosecutors and defense attorney last week that the prosecutors have not proven their charge of bribery and are unlikely to succeed in doing so since all their major witnesses have already testified. The implications are earth-shattering. For the past seven years, two forces, the state prosecution and the media, Get my drift? The state prosecution and the media have pushed Israel to the brink of civil war in their effort to criminalize Netanyahu and demonize his supporters. It's the same Marxist tactic. Their goal was never hidden. They seek to oust Netanyahu from public life and disenfranchise his voters by disqualifying and demonizing their elected leader. When I read this, Later today, I said, is this not as close to what I posted as possible? I'm, I'm not making an allegation. I'm saying here, look at the overlap here. Beginning in 2016, because she's right on, through criminal leaks to reporters from every major newspaper, radio station, and television channel, state prosecutors, police investigators, journalists, and editors invented and shaped a narrative of criminality surrounding Netanyahu and sold it to the public on a daily basis. Netanyahu, they said, undermined Israel's economy, national security, moral fiber to satisfy his decadent tastes, enrich his cronies, and further his obsessive compulsive quest for positive media coverage from the same media that hates him. With its unqualified commitment to Netanyahu's downfall, the media justified every means the prosecution employed against him. Shame on America's media. Again, participating in these 
diabolical Stalin-like practices where you are fed audio, fed information by the damn government to try and take out Trump. Same damn thing in Israel. The reporters and editors who proudly proclaim themselves champions of civil rights and the rule of law look the other way or justified repeated crimes committed by prosecutors and police investigators in order to get Netanyahu. And she goes on in a fantastic piece. In fact, I can't cut it there. It's too important. Consider just a few of those crimes which, while exposed and full on the witness stand, were widely known in real time. Rather than report them critically or even dispassionately, the media justified or ignored them and attacked as unprofessional and corrupt the few writers and reporters who were willing to expose them. To compel Netanyahu's closest associates to incriminate him, the prosecution and police extorted, tortured, and humiliated two of Netanyahu's chiefs of staff, David Sharon, and Ari Haro, former director general of the Ministry of Communication, Shlomo Filber and Netanyahu's form, former spokesman, Nir Hevetz, were subjected to physical and psychological torture and extortion at the hands of police investigators, closely guided by prosecutors. They were locked up and denied food and medical treatment. The police ruined Hevetz and Haro's marriages. Police carted Sharon's elderly mother into an investigation cell in front of him to try and break him. These men who committed no crimes were subjected to prolonged incarceration and denied sleep. Evets was jailed in a flea-ridden cell and denied minimal medical care. All the witnesses were subjected to prolonged public humiliation. The police opened a scurrilous criminal probe against Haro and staged a dramatic arrest, taking him into custody as he landed at the airport as if he were a drug kingpin Remember Peter Navarro, Mr. and Mrs. America? Remember that? Where they arrested the man in an airport? They opened up another open-ended, scurrilous investigation against Filbert's son. Haro and Sharon's bank accounts were frozen. Their wives found themselves unable to even buy food at the supermarket. All to take down Netanyahu. Just like in America, whatever they can do to take down Trump. And the media are in on all of it. Multiple other prosecution witnesses were subjected to similar treatment in the state prosecution's campaign to use the criminal probe to intimidate and terrorize Netanyahu and coerce him into stepping down. Sound familiar, America? To demonize and criminalize the sitting prime minister and his associates. Prosecutors and police investigators engaged in widespread criminal use of cyber warfare tools developed to fight Israel's enemies Netanyahu's closest aides and apparently his children and wife were subjected to illegal monitoring of their electronic communications. Wow. At least we can do illegal search warrants, right? And send a SWAT team to the former president's home. One of the breach of trust charges against Netanyahu allegedly originated in the police's illegal use of such spyware tool against Ari Haro. Again, most of the details of this prosecutorial misconduct An apparent outright criminality on the part of investigators and prosecutors was known, sometimes as it was happening. The vast majority of reporters and editors in every medium supported these actions, just like they support the leak of that audio yesterday that they're slobbering all over. Fools at Mediate. Fools all over our web pages. Everywhere. They don't look as this as totalitarian activity. It's perfectly fine by them. Well, one day, that pendulum will swing. You mark my words. 